What's going on guys? This is my first video here of my car content for this channel. I have put a lot of thought into it lately and I've had some people reach out to me um, regarding my DIY projects and the things I've done for this car. They told me that I should start documenting it and I don't really like typing much. I decided I was just gonna make, start making uh, videos so that you guys can see what I'm doing. And uh, it's not really gonna be like a DIY channel or uh, DIY videos. I'm, I'm probably gonna have some like instructional content on here, but I'm not really focusing on that. But I am putting it on here so to give you guys some ideas, show you guys what I've been doing and how I've been doing it and kind of the approach of how I'm going with things. So for those of you who don't know me, you'll see some of the videos on my channel. I'm sure you'll see it when you you look on like the side bar, whichever side that's gonna be. Years and years ago, I, I was really, really into music and I still am. Um, I just haven't really been recording much and posting videos on YouTube. I still do the occasional, you know, playing piano, playing guitar, but you'll see a lot of music content. I do have plans to get back into it. Uh, this is kind of like my startup right here. Um, from the videos that you've seen from the past, I was in high school and college. A lot has changed since then. I've graduated, I now work as an engineer. I found a passion for cars and I just started modifying this car that I have here. This is an Acura TL. It's a 2004 six speed. And I'll give you guys the walk around in a second. For those of you who are familiar with me, you've known me, what I've done with the car, uh, this car really hasn't seen a shop. Everything that's been done to it, I've done myself. I kind of started this whole car thing two and a half to three years ago. Sophomore year of college, I owned an, an Acura RSX. It was a 2002 base. I wasn't really into cars and I was also on a college budget. And for those of you who are watching and I've been into college, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, you don't really have much money to spend. Like I said, I started three years ago. I really had no plans for it. I picked it up because I graduated, bought the car um, for about $6,000. Had about 120,000 miles on it. Right now she's sitting at 170. And when I bought it, I didn't really have plans for it except to do the little cosmetics here and there. And for those of you who are Acura TL owners, you're familiar with Acura Zine and the 3G forums. Uh, a lot of the stuff that I've done, I've found from there um, or the Facebook group. Um, more so the forums though, because almost everything's there. I mean, these, this car is what, like 16 years old? Eight, wait, is it 2020, 2000? Yeah, 16 years old. Can't do math right now. All I did when I first bought it was I, I bought some wheels for it and coilovers and I dropped it. It wasn't until last year, 2019, when I met a few more Acura TL owners in the Pittsburgh area. Kind of got me thinking to get back into like the car scene or, or not get back into it, but to get into the car scene and um, actually start really modifying the car. Like I said, everything I've done to this car, I've done myself. Pretty new to it, new to working on cars but I'm not new to the technical side of things. Let's do a walk around of the car and um, I'll show you what I've done. And then from there, you know, we'll, I'll, I'll be posting more content. So yeah. All right, let's do a walk around of the car. I'm in my garage right now. I got plans to work on my parents' car today because something's wrong with their rear brakes. So I'm gonna take a look at that, see what's going on. So like I said, this is a 2004 Acura TL. It's a six speed. Um, it is a base, it's not a uh, Type S. Um, and of course, we got the stickers here. That's my Instagram. Follow me on at Base6MT. This is the uh, company, Garzy Bear Performance for the Supercharger Kit. The guy who runs his name's Andy. Very good guy. Very knowledgeable. He's uh, considered one of the um, OGs for the Acura TL. Um, and he's very knowledgeable about J Series engines. So if you ever have any questions, um, I highly recommend going to him. Because this is a base. I had to put this on here, embrace the base. So, um, the garage is kind of messy, so I'm not really gonna show too much of it. I'm gonna try and keep it out of frame. <laughs> and we'll do a better walk around later, but I'll pop the engine bay, give you the sides. There you go. There's a few things I gotta redo uh, this upcoming winter, but I'll get into that in another video, a separate video. But yeah, this is the um, engine bay. There she is. The obnoxious blow off valve. And a leaf. That wants to chill here. Nope. Out. Again, this is just a little walk around of what I got going on here. Um, a lot of people are going to be asking me in the comments probably about this diffuser. Um, this is something that I made, guys. Um, maybe I'll get into it in a separate video, but not today. Uh, I do have plans to uh, customize these a little bit um, this winter. So that's pretty much the car. Um, I, I'll do another walk around later on. 
case you guys want to see it. This is wrapped in Avery Denison, gloss cloudy blue. I did it myself. It took me about a week and a half to two weeks between work and coming from home. This is I kind of came home and worked from or wrapped this from like six to midnight, and then I had to go to work the next day. So this is the leftover that I have here. I bought a full roll. Avery Denison, really good stuff. I highly recommend it. Um, those of you uh, who have wrapped something before or have taken it to a shop, you'll hear really good things about Avery Denison. The only comment I can make on it is the finish. I, I did watch a few videos and hear that the finish has kind of like an orange peelish look and they are correct. It's not that bad. Considering the uh, state that my car was in before I wrapped it, I'm actually happy with how the finish looks now and uh, kind of has more of like a satin finish to it than, than a gloss. So, but I think it's good. Okay, so I'm gonna set the camera. Um, I'm gonna back this up and I'm going to bring my parents' car in here, um, the Nissan, and I'm gonna work on it. Uh, I'll probably just show a little bit of what I'm doing here and there. Okay, so we're back. Um, I had to switch up the cars a little bit. Let me walk through what's going on here. Um, so this is my parents' car. Nothing special to it. It's a Nissan Altima. So uh, I think it's a 2012, 2013 maybe. Apparently they're having some problems with some brakes. Uh, their rear brakes, I think the driver's side, rear driver's side or rear, rear left, I think it's seized. Um, and I'll show you why I think that. I don't know if you can see it well, but I'm gonna take the wheel off in a sec, but if you can see the wear pattern on the rotors um, towards the middle, there's a lot of rust still, and it's just the outer edge that's actually still like a machine finish. Like it's like the brakes are actually making contact, or the brake pad is making contact to the rotor. Um, so I'm gonna jack this up, and I'm going to take this wheel off, take a look at it. All the other ones look pretty good. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I think their inspection's coming up, so I'm gonna take a whack at this. Just take a look and see if they need to change anything. If they do, probably change it for them um, because I'm a good son and I'm nice. Let me show you guys what's going on here. Uh, those of you who are familiar with cars, you already know what's going on. Um, I've never seen this before. I'm thinking maybe the caliper seized uh, partially, and that's why it's no longer making contact. See all this rust right here that you're seeing where my light's at? Um, it's supposed to look, you know, like this machine finish. This right here. It's supposed to go further down uh, towards the rotor. And uh, I mean, this is pretty common stuff, pretty basic stuff. Those of you who change and do your own work, I'm sure if you change your oil and um, you know adjust your valves and whatnot, you've probably done your brakes, so you've seen this. But um, I haven't seen a seized caliper before, so this is new to me. Um, I'm gonna probably take it apart, see if there's any interferences, anything that's kind of jamming this in the place um, and I'm gonna try and troubleshoot it myself so yeah let's see what happens This is what the um, caliper bolt looks like, right? That's the top one. Here's the problem. That's the bottom one. So this sheared off, which is pretty cool. Um, and you can't really even see it because my phone's not adjusting. There you go. Sheared right off. So that's stuck in there. That sucks. 
Uh, I gotta find a way to get it out. I hate to say it, but I think this, uh, I think this caliper's kaput. Though I might be able to drill this out, so we'll try that. So, I found out the caliper seized. I'll give you a closer look. Uh, there's a pin in here. Come on, rotate. Rotate, there you go. There's a pin that's uh, I tried drilling out. <laughs> it didn't work out too well. And you're probably gonna see a lot of people be like, oh, you should have used uh, you know, like a thread out or something that extracts the um, threads. But I actually don't think it was threads that were the problem. I think it's the pin that actually seized in there which was not letting the um, caliper piston uh, actuate. So it wasn't actually the piston that seized. Uh, I just backed it out with the piston compressor and it went in pretty, uh, it, it backed in, backed out pretty smoothly. Um, so, but I'll show you the little, so this is the original, um, you know, caliper pin, whatever you want to call it, the correct terminology, you guys can correct me in the comments. Um, Right, it's threaded towards the uh, head of the bolt, and then the end has sort of a pin. What happened was this section right here um, got seized inside the actual bracket, and it's like literally welded or like fused together or rusted together, something of that sort. It, whatever it is, um, it's preventing me from getting it out, and it's preventing the um, cal or the brake caliper piston to actually actuate which is pretty incredible considering the amount of force that this thing can generate here's the one that got seized uh, you can see that it sheared right off um, and the threads weren't actually the problem it was the pin anyways we're gonna go to the store or a local auto parts and um, we're gonna get a new caliper here I just started the car up I'm back in the uh, TL uh, baby and uh, I'm gonna let it warm up a little bit. I don't like to uh, start the car and then just go right off. Uh, so, the, kind of like the mods that I've done to this car is I have uh, RV6 V3 pre-cat deletes, um, and those are connected to the RV6 V3 J pipe, uh, which are long tube, and they delete the third cat, and then it connects to a pseudo cat back with a dual or dual quad exhaust tip. 30 magazine clip in half a second. Anyways, um, it's a little on the loud side, but it's not like straight pipe or anything. Um, it is a little raspy, and I get a lot of people complaining, saying that it's too raspy, sounds like a bee's nest or whatever. Kind of like the cutty throatiness of it. Um, I'm not so much worried about a deep growl like other people are. And that's mainly because, I mean, it's gonna sound stupid and people are gonna roast me for this, but it kind of sounds like a GTR at sometimes. Um, I mean, obviously not as good, but it just reminds me of the cuttiness um, and the sharpness of it reminds me of like uh, the sharp V6 of a GTR. So I really like that sound. Um, there are other exhausts out there that people have that sound really good too. Uh, for, for me, this is just my personal opinion. Um, I, I do think it is a little on the raspy side. I either have plans to add another resonator to kind of cut things down a little bit, but I don't want the tone to change too much. So we'll see, you know, if I really want to go that route. The other one is to actually create my own um, true dual exhaust, but I don't know if I want to go that route either because I don't know if there's going to be enough gains or uh, let's see, like cost to benefit gain uh, as far as power goes. Um, I know that a two and a half inch diameter piping is a little undersized when it comes to boost. Um, right now the, the, the car is making around 418 to the wheels. This thing is a beast on the highway, not so good with digs. Um, even in, after I put uh, really good tires on, well, really good in my opinion, um, and that's saying a lot because I've never really actually had um, like sticky tires on before, let alone like uh, meaty meaty tires. Right now I'm running 265, 35, um, 18 Hankook RS4s. I don't know how they go up against like Toyos, uh, like Proxies or um, Pirellis or Michelin, but I, I think they're on par with them. 
Um, I'm not entirely sure. But for me, it's, it works for me. I like them. Um, they were on sale at the time, so I had to grab them. Uh, yeah, so what was I saying? I kind of lost my train of thought because I saw another car. I wonder if any of you guys do something similar to that where you pay attention to the other cars around you. Um, not so much like pay attention uh, how you're supposed to pay attention, but more so pay attention in the, in the sense that uh, if you see another car, like you kind of wonder, ooh, what is that? Ooh, what is that? Um, I do that all the time. It's a bad habit. It's not a good habit. Pay attention to the road. Be a good driver. Um, here we are at the local parts store. I will not say the name because I don't know if my video will get flagged for it. So, we're here at the local parts store. Put on the mask. Repping the company. Alright, so I'm going to head in. I'm going to get this caliper. Uh, and then I'll be back in here. And then we can talk a little bit more about what, the, what I've done with the car. Um, and plans for it. All right, see you guys in a little bit. A few moments later. All right, guys, we're back. Um, so it turns out that they only had the side that it needed, which was the driver rear side. And this looks beautiful. Look at this, brand stinking new. Just to do a quick swap so that they can get their car inspected because they need that soon. I've been telling them I was going to do this for quite some time now. So, yeah. Anyways, here's the startup. So, yeah, All right, let's go home. So I was talking about um, the tires that I have. I don't know if you guys just heard all that rumbling and that, that vibration. Uh, that is caused by 75A stiffness motor mounts. It has caused the ride. Hold on. Yeah, yeah blow up valve, sounds sweet. Um, when people hear that, they're really confused whenever I say that it's supercharged. Because most people, when they think of supercharger, they think of the uh, infamous whine that you hear. The ride um, is actually very, very rough. Um, if you daily your car, I, I probably would not suggest that you guys do it unless you, you really like to. Um, it has helped a lot. I talked about what? I talked the exhaust. I talked the... Um, tires, um, I'm on teen or tine, whatever you want to say it, um, coilovers, I'm lowered maybe an inch. I had to raise it up because I just put new wheels on. Um, I, they are, I think, Street Advanced or SA, I forgot what they stand for. I, I, I don't know if I want to keep them. Um, I've heard good things about BC coilovers and everyone's been saying you just got to go with them. They're just a lot better, they have more adjustability. Um, they are pricey, so um, I'm not like in a rush to get them now because what, for what I'm doing, like this is okay, times are okay. Um, but I think in the future, yeah, I think we're gonna do make make a swap and go to BCs here. Uh, I did just get new wheels. I was trying to say that just a second ago. They are um, ESRs. They just released these about a month ago. They are ESR RF 15s. They're 18 by nine and a half plus 22. Um, again, if you drive a TL and you're watching this, I'm probably going to get some comments. Why did you go with such a wide tire? Uh, that's too wide. You're going to rub. I'm well aware of this. Um, I have been rubbing and I'm okay with it for now because I have some plans in the future. So yeah, so that's suspension, tires, wheels, uh, exhaust. I've actually already changed my clutch to a spec stage three plus. Um, it's capable of holding, I think up to like 500 plus horsepower um, which is great you know that's perfect for what I'm doing I'm not trying to go too all out the feeling of the clutch is actually pretty OEM um, a lot of people say when when you hear like stage one stage two stage three like you think of like a really hard clutch that's just really hard to depress and like there's no much not much play um, for what it is it actually is really um, really smooth let's swap this out and um, so I can do a, a walk around of the car again and um, show you guys in depth what I've been doing I wish I would have done this um, a while ago I wish I would have started this whole vlog pictures are nice and I have a bunch of them of what I've done but videos it just saves a lot of time because I don't have to type captions and I don't have to like you know explain too much I can just do it here and then if you guys have questions or anything like that or any comments or any even suggestions or anything like that you can just 
put it down in the comments. I can read them. I can ignore them. I can um, acknowledge them, and you know, so on and so forth. So let's go. Uh, let's go install this caliper and finish up this Ultima. One hour later. All right, guys. So I just finished up the Nissan. Um, I changed the calipers like I showed you. I didn't really want to go too much into depth with it because um, it's pretty straightforward. I took it for a test drive, everything's good. So I, I found a decent spot here where I can um, kind of do a walk around with the car. Uh, this color really does shine and really does show with the fall colors and there's this nice reddish tree that's behind me or actually in front of me but you can't see it because the camera's pointing. Um, at me. <laughs> so let's do a little walk around here. Um, so we'll talk about the mods that I've done. I, I know I went into depth already with it. Um, I did already say most of everything. I did exhaust. I did tires. Um, hold on, let, me, let me pop the hood. I did exhaust. I did tires. I did wheels. Um, and then I've also done the clutch and the supercharger but we'll go into more depth a bit here again here is the engine bay um, it's a little dirty right I know and I am gonna be repainting things uh, but I do I think I do want to swap this to like a type S or a, um, an 0708 base um, intake manifold because it just it just looks a little bit better um, I don't know if it has much a flow gain I don't believe so I'm, I think I'm just going for cosmetics at this point plus there's some imperfections that I have on here um, you can't really tell on this camera but I did need to repaint this um, it was kind of just you know I, when I took it off to do the supercharger and do all the maintenance with the valve adjustment and whatnot I kind of just painted it just to have some type of niceness to it so when I pop open the hood and show people what I've done they kind of um, aren't disgusted by my engine day anyways um, again I showed you the blower down there this is a Rotrex uh, C3881. This front splitter was uh, made by me. Um, I actually we don't have a Menards here. Um, it's the closest one is in Ohio, and uh, my one of my friends uh, has a camp up north, and he was up there. And I said, hey, it's like 20 minutes away from you. Do you want to go and uh, grab? Um, a sheet of uh, HDPE. I think this is a quarter inch, and um, so I have two sheets in my garage, and one of them I, I use to cut this up. Here, these canards, eBay. Yep, I know eBay. It's okay. Uh, I did a Type S headlight, headlight swap. Um, I've said this in one of my recent IG posts, Instagram posts, um, <laughs> and this is actually 100% true. I um, I wrap this car and I, I pick the whole colorway just so that I can match the amber in the headlights. So it's pretty funny. Walk around. Here is the ESR's RF15 uh, drilled and slotted rotors. We got power stops, uh, if I remember correctly. Brembo brakes. These come standard on the uh, 6 speed TLs as well as the Type S. eBay splitters. Type S taillight swap. Um, I do have plans, as I told you before. The rear side markers, by the way, um, these things right there, uh, I got those off of eBay. Those are depots, I think. Um, I wrapped, this is an endless RPM um, fiberglass duck lip style or CS style spoiler, and I just wrapped it in a vivid vinyl carbon fiber. It actually turned out really nice. So there's that. Um, I did also this trim right here. And then, so again, here's the diffuser. A lot of people want to know about this. So there it is, there's the diffuser. Uh, stock interior, this is a dash mat, dash topper. Um, Acura TLs are notorious for their dash cracks. If I went underneath this right now, you guys would be disgusted, and I'm not gonna do it, but this is a dash topper. Um, what I've done though is I have, you can see it here, I've actually glued Velcro straps. Um, see that? Velcro straps, and I kind of pulled it so that it, it fit nice um, around the dash. Um, those are my custom gauge pods that I 3D printed. So we are likewise shifter, 
that is my fob for my parking in, at work. Uh, this is a 1.1 pound shifter. Um, it feels really nice. Again, I have the Comtech short shifter. I don't know if I mentioned that, but um, it feels nice and solid. I do have plans to get the bushings. Um, I am going to be changing these seats soon because I got rips in them. Uh, overall, the interior is not too bad. Uh, I think eBay floor mats. Not too bad. It could use a cleaning. It could use a pretty good cleaning, but uh, for the most part, you know, it is what it is. And then here's the carpet. I gotta clean this up. I know I gotta vacuum this. These um. These pedals I've actually got off of eBay as well. Um, you just kind of just drill them into the, uh, the metal. Take off the rubber from the existing pedals and drill into it. Um, I do need a deep cleaning here, but here's again another close up of my uh, gauge pods. Yeah, you can barely tell that they're 3D printed except for the small lines here and there, but from a distance, and if you're looking at it, it kind of looks like it just blends right in, which is really nice. Um, yeah, that's about it. Okay, so let me do another walk around. Shotty text me saying where you going She don't even know about what I do or where I'm going Always asking what's the deal, asking if there's something wrong She need to stop making problems with me before I'm gone Before I'm gone I ain't playing games with you You the one that has my heart Ain't nobody come between us, yeah, they know it when they see us We've been at it from the start And I ain't thinking about these other women You ain't thinking about no other man As long as we're together, our love will be forever Young like it never land Alright guys, so that pretty much wraps up this video um, Again, this is kind of just like an introduction to what I'll be doing um, A little bit here and there We'll get into it some more um, as I continue to post and um, I'm always looking to do new things to this thing so um, I'm gonna head home and um, I got some other stuff to take care of thanks for watching uh, like comment subscribe if you want to of course you don't have to and um, yeah see you guys in the next one I thought I told you I ain't playing games with you the one that has my heart Ain't nobody